Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Red Dragon Inn Allies unboxing. This is for the solo character, Brother Vashting. Uh, so he's a human cleric. Uh, he going to the other people and part of the Korath clerics. Um, we have like Orba um, and Serena. Uh, so yeah, a couple other different characters are all part of that same little world. Um, so we're going to hop in. He has a fun deck to play. Very interesting. So, of course, we're going to have our instruction manual, or instruction pamphlet, rather, uh, which will tell us how to play him, uh, and I'll just go over that as we go through the cards. We're going to get your, ooh, I popped out one, but we get your uh, gold tokens, alcohol, and fortitude markers, keep track of everything. Seen those a bazillion times if you've been buying everything. We get his board here, uh, which will have his listening for deck, discard, drink me, turn order, you know, your uh, fortitude and alcohol content, keep track of that. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, we also have prayer tokens, so he's going to get 12 of these prayer tokens, which are used as kind of currency for his deck. Um, which I'll explain as I go through. Now, to come back to this... If you don't like the super generic one, you can pick up box number five, the character trove, and you can get this much betterly designed one, um, which has this picture on there. It still has your relevant information on there. It also has his name, as well as it has a spot for his prayer cards, which are his special deck. Now, this is only available in box number five, which also contains it for any other previous characters that didn't have this. If you have other characters... Um, or boxes you've bought that came out before five, you know, big sets, one through four, or some of the small single character decks. You can pick up that storage box and, you know, get these extra cards, or extra little, uh, player backers. The other thing you will also get in set number five, is not in these small boxes again, is a deck divider, um, or a box divider, which are really nice. Puts your cards in there very well, so Brother Bastion, the human cleric. Um, the other fun thing about these is on the back, they explain just a briefly how their cards work. Um, so yeah, if you already know, you can read the instruction, that little pamphlet, whatever. Gives you a lot more information. This is just kind of a reminder. So if you haven't played for a while or you're handing it to someone, they can be like, oh, I can look back at this as a reminder. Um, so set up, he has a special prayer deck. So here is his prayer deck, Bastion's prayer deck, that same symbol as his tokens. Um, you choose three of the nine cards. You keep these in your hand, uh, but you keep you keep them aside, but you can look at them, but you don't show the other players. Then throughout the game, you'll gain prayer tokens by various cards. Then at some point, you can pay the cost in the upper left-hand corner of one of your prayers to play it. When you play it, then it stays face up in front of you. So everyone can see it. Then you can pay for that again to keep using it. Um, yeah, so when you're picking your prayers, it's kind of neat. You get three of nine, so you could technically play this three times with completely different, 100% different cards. You can do a lot of mixing and matching. But you probably don't want to include too many high-cost ones or a lot of the same. But, it, well, it looks like they're all threes and fours, except one of them is a five. So... You know, I mean, maybe picking too many, you know, like the five and two fours might make it a little bit harder to play these. But it might just depend on, you know, what you're trying to do. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a, it's a different thing and nobody else has done. Other players like other decks get access to special cards. Um, his is the first one where you only get to pick certain ones and you only get certain cards. Um, two, three. Six. We're going to look at his basic cards that everybody has first, and then we'll get into his more unique cards. So, gambling, I'm in. Start a round of gambling, or take control a round of gambling. Six copies of that. Two copies of I raise. Take control a round of gambling. Each player, including you, must ante again. Two copies of winning hand. Take control a round of gambling. The next card to take control must be a cheating card. The wench thinks you should stop playing with the drinks. Negate is sometimes target changes the effects of a drink. This includes negate, ignore, split drinks, pass drinks, 
or alter any drink effects. This card can only be affected by I don't think so. Two copies of Wench Bring Some Drinks for My Friends. You may play this card during your order a drink phase of your turn. Pay one gold to the inn, order two additional drinks. You can tip the wench. Uh, pick a player, they pay one gold to the inn. And I don't think so. You get a sometimes card. That card can only be affected by another I don't think so. So there's his regular generic cards that everybody gets. And then his unique cards are two copies of Let Me Offer You a Benediction of Cleansing. Pick another player, they lose three fortitude. Or pick another player, they lose one fortitude, but you gain a prayer token. Two copies of That's Why They Call It Temporary Healing. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Uh, there's Korash, the Sun God. Um, Korash isn't all healing and protection. For example, pick another player, they lose one fortitude and gain one alcohol content. Gain a prayer token. Uh, two copies of Korash doesn't like seeing his flock get hurt. Ignore an action, sometimes your anytime card that affects your fortitude. You may play this card when an action, sometimes your anytime card would make you lose fortitude. Reduce that fortitude loss by one and gain a prayer token. The Elven Wine here is excellent. Try it. Pay one gold to the inn. Pick another player. They gain three alcohol content. Two copies of I may be a holy man, but I can still fight back. You may play this card immediately after you lose fortitude. From a card played by another player, you may not play if you reduce that fortitude loss. That player loses to fortitude. Uh, Korash teaches that it is better to, to give than receive. You sermon the others. Each player pays you one gold, or each other player pays one gold to the inn, and you gain one prayer token. Uh, two copies of I'm fine. Clerics are good at this sort of thing. Gain one, to gain one fortitude. Um, drink and be merry. Wine is proof that gods love us. Gain one alcohol content. Pick another player. They drink the top drink of their drink me pile. Two copies of healers are in high demand around here. You may play this card when you are about to lose gold. Use gold from the inn rather than your own stash. I've been adventuring long enough to know a few tricks. Draw two cards from your character deck. You may, play, you may then discard two cards from your hand if you do gain a prayer token. You may not take any game actions between drawing and discarding. Two copies of Korash is fair. Even I must pay for his protection. Ignore an action, sometimes, or any time card that affects your fortitude. Pay one gold to the inn, gain a prayer token. Two copies of Ritual Purification, ignore a drink, or lose the alcohol content of a drink by one, and gain a prayer token. Uh, no, I'm already praying away tomorrow's headache. Ignore a drink, gain a prayer token. Cheating may make you rich, but it won't make you happy. You may play this card when another player plays a cheating card. You may not play if you've already left a round of gambling. You get the cheating card, you win the round of gambling. And finally, two copies of Our book is somewhat fuzzy on the subject of gambling. You may play this card when you must ante instead of ante and leave the round of gambling. Play a prayer token. Alright, so that was all his regular cards. He has, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen cards in his deck um, that can potentially give him prayer tokens. Some are optional, some are made, some have to. So if you played through your entire deck, you only have fourteen um, tokens. Uh, and you only have twelve total, so... There's kind of that. So you probably never get all of them without maybe at least spending some. Um, but just an idea. So if you go through your entire deck, um, is how long do you have to wait until you get it? So 14 of, I think there's 
like uh, 35 or 40 cards in a deck. I don't remember the exact number. Um, 35 to 40, somewhere in there. So not even half, so less than half your deck is going to give it. So you're not going to get it. Get a prayer token, not necessarily every other card. All right, here are his prayer cards. Um, and these are pretty powerful, which is why you only get three of them. So it costs four, but it says prayer of negation. Negate is sometimes card. Uh, prayer of sobriety. Losing four alcohol content. Prayer of restoration. Gain three fortitude. So again, you can play these multiple times. So not one-time use effects. You just have to gain more prayer tokens to use them. Um, prayer of enlightenment. Draw four cards from your character deck. If it's your action, you may play another action card from your hand, from your hand this phase. Uh, prayer of indulgence. Each other player gains two alcohol content, or pick another player, they gain three alcohol content. The prayer of purifying fire. Pick another player, they lose three fortitude. If it's your action phase, you may play another action card from your hand this phase. Uh, prayer of Providence. You may play this card. When you lose gold, use gold from the ing rather than your own stash, then gain two gold from the ing. The high card. Prayer of Generosity. Give a drink you're about to drink to another player. And finally, Prayer of Protection. You are in action, sometimes or anytime card to affect your fortitude, alcohol, or content, or gold. You may not use this to ignore a round of gambling. Uh, so that's really fun. Bunch of different extra effects. You can kind of tailor him a little bit more to what your maybe play style might be. Um, as you can also see, he doesn't have a lot of gambling cards. So again, if you're not, maybe not someone that doesn't really like to gamble, this might be a character you might like. Um, but yeah, definitely a different character. Um, so that was Brother Bastion. And again, what I think it would be kind of fun to do would play a multiplayer game. With him, um, Orva, the elder, the grand cleric, and uh, Serena, um, the pious, because you have three people from this order um, who are all, you know, different things. And then, yeah, it'd be kind of just interesting to see what would happen there. I mean, I, just as a thematic thing, like, hey, we're going to play with all the people that are part of this group. And then, who would the fourth person be? I'm trying to. I'm trying to think that there's somebody else that was part of that. Um, the only other person I can think of that had a direct connection to that was... Um, there was in set number 8, it was Father Fari, who uh, worships the Earth God. Uh, the Land God. Um, Farner. Otherwise, I was wondering, does Geardry the Priestess from the first set, I haven't looked at her cards in a while, um, so I know she mentions goddess and stuff, I just wonder if she specified one of the goddesses. She does not. Okay, I thought maybe she might have specified the water goddess, because I know she does some stuff there. Uh, but yeah, you know, that'd be kind of fun to do. Just some of them theme things like that would be interesting. Um, Alright, so that's what I got for him. Brother Bastion, if you're just looking for an interesting, uh, different take on a simpler character. There we go. See you guys later. Bye.